wait for it. So, hello again, everybody. It's uh, as you can see, we're here with Sam. How are we doing, Sam? Yeah, good morning, Michael. Morning, Nish. I'm very good, thank you. How are you both? Yeah, very well, very well. We're just hearing about your very good news about your house confirmation. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, very excited. Just uh, looking forward to to moving in and I better start buying some things, such as a, a bed would probably be a good place to start. Yeah, yeah. Is that it now? Have you have you already uh, in your mind now? Have you have you already designed each room in the house? Has that already happened? Uh, yeah, yes. Although I'm pretty bad at stuff like this, I think the designing stuff needs to be um, left with the, the the girlfriend. Really, she can decide what yeah. goes where. Well, she's gonna she's gonna tell me what goes where anyway. So nice. Yeah. Well, well, there's yeah. no doubt. Obviously, you know your skills as a mathematician, as well as a physical expert, will enable you to not only budget properly for the house move, but also yeah. enable you to have the physical prowess to then enact the dream. Yeah, well, I've done some measuring up, um, but I've already got that wrong because the sofa's uh, too big for the lounge. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just going to pass it all on to, to her, I think. Uh... Well, and, and if I may, can I pass on the subject of physical education to you? Yes, please. Yes, over to me. No worries. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Cheers, guys. Uh, so welcome back to another session of GCSE PE. Today we're going to be looking into more detail around the skeletal system. Uh, and Nish, if you can, or Michael, can you share my screen? I will do my very best. And I'll just click present. I'm not going to look at that video just yet. We've got a couple of videos for you today. We've got one with Neil, uh, Niall Wilson, sorry, the gymnast. It's just loading, I see. Uh, there we go. And we've got um, Tom Daly as well. Uh, the, the Olympic diver. Uh, but first, we want to just look at recapping the skeleton system. So, as you can remember, on Tuesday, we looked at the um, different bones in the body and the 19 that we need to go through. And um, we'll just quickly run through all of them here. So, at the top, we've got the cranium, the vertebrae, ribs, clavicle, uh, the sternum, which of course is the chest bone, the scapula, the pelvis, the humerus, which is the top part of the, the arm, the radius, which is the bigger bigger bone in the in the forearm and the ulna then you have the carpals the metacarpals and the phalanges which appear at the tips of your fingers as well as the tips of your toes and then you have the femur the patella which is your kneecap the tibia and fibula the fibula being the, um, the bigger bone in your, in your leg if you will um, sorry the tibia being the bigger bone uh, and the metatarsals and your tarsals so your tarsals around uh, the ankle that joins the ankle bones and the uh, toes. So just a little bit more detail. Here you go. You've got the pictures there that um, help you and we'll fly through these uh, to describe where they are. So the scapula is the shoulder blade, humans we spoke about, the clavicle being the collar collarbone, the ribs and the rib cage, which of course protect your vital organs, the sternum being the chest bone. And in more detail with that picture there, you can see the phalanges, the metacarpals, and the carpals. Then we move on to the uh, femur and the pelvis, which is also known as the trunk sometimes. You've got the patella and the tibia there, you can see being the, uh, the shin bone with the femur joining together with the hip. And then you've got the fibula and your toes being your tarsals, your metatarsals and phalanges being the tips of those toes. Okay, so just a, a little um, opportunity for you here to, to have a look at some sports, uh, some sportsmen, some athletes, and to have a look at what they're they're holding. They're obviously in pain of some sort. So you've got Cristiano Ronaldo there. Is it the scapula, metatarsals, cranium, sternum, or patella? Of course, there he's holding his patella. Steven Gerrard punching his sternum or his chest. Uh, the rugby player whose name I don't know, I'm afraid, but he's holding his um, cranium. Uh, Wayne Rooney holding his metatarsals, which I think he broke before the World Cup, and uh, Andy Murray holding the back of his uh, shoulder, which would be his scapula. Uh, okay, so we're going to look today at both the functions of the skeleton um, and then go into more details in terms of the movement that happens within the bones. Okay, so the, the five key terms you need to know in terms of the functions of the skeleton are the joints protection, muscle attachment, 
blood cell production and mineral storage. Uh, and we'll go into more details as to what these all mean. But of course, remember, there is a couple of different uh, abbreviations that help you to remember those functions. And one I use, as you can see on the left-hand side, and I think a lot of teachers use this, is my brother makes poor jokes. MB, MPJ, and that stands as, as we've already said, muscle attachments, blood cell production, mineral storage, protection of vital organs, and joints, and the joints are for movement. So I've got four examples here of what uh, function matches up with which description. Uh, a is for avoiding injury to the head when taking a hit in boxing. Of course, that's going to be P for protection. Uh, question B, you've got demonstrating a front crawl in the 800 meter race in swimming. And that would, of course, be joints for movement. C, performing in a long distance event would be blood cell production as we've spoke about before we know that uh, blood cell production helps uh, carry oxygen around the body to allow you to have more energy and perform at a higher level uh, and then sitting in an upright position while horse riding would be muscle attachments and again if we go into we have a look at more detail really around these five functions so you, first of all you've got the muscle attachment um, and muscle attachment is uh, the is knee, is where you basically your muscles um, are attached using um, um, ligaments uh, and joints that, that help those muscles work. So it's, it's the ability to move central to all sport, and your performances and movements are created by muscles. And the tendons, the tendons actually act as, and it says here, tendons act as the anchors that muscles pull as they come. Tracked, I should say, not contact. There's a lovely description picture there for you. Uh, we've got Katrina Johnson Thompson, and um, one of the questions here in terms of how does this image here help of, um, her event? So, in terms of muscle attachment, how does that help her perform in her sports? And it says the biceps and triceps attaching to the shoulder and elbow joint. Um, and this allows the movement of the arm to throw the javelin. If we moved on now to the next function, which is blood cell production, it says some bones have hollow centers that hold bone marrow. And as we spoke about before, bone marrow makes most of the cells of the blood, including red blood cells and white blood cells. And again, we can give you an example of um, Catherine Johnson Thompson. And it asks her basically, how does blood, blood production help her perform in the event of the 800 metres? And I think, I just need to double check, I think Catherine Johnson Thompson is an heptathlete. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, bone, bone marrow produces red blood cells, which allowed oxygen to be carried to working muscles throughout her race. So again, think of blood production, we're talking about the oxygen that's pumping around the body. Uh, that's, that's key to that part. Um, and the next function we're looking at is mineral storage. Um, we spoke about phosphorus and phosphates in, in the body and how it can make your both your bones and your teeth and it makes everything stronger. Um, but phosphates help to reduce muscle pain in particular um, when following hard exercise, as it says there. Uh, for her haptaphyl... Uh, how does this function aid the heptathlon and rest days between events? Phosphate will help to recover after her event. So we've, we spoke about how it's um, key to recovery. Uh, and that's why you see a lot of athletes taking all these mineral drinks uh, with lots of different um, calciums and phosphorus uh, in, inside the drinks. Um, in terms of the protection of the vital organs, I'm going to show you an example shortly of how um, athletes are protected, not just using equipment, but also yeah, their body uh, as well, as, and, and the protection um, from the bones within the body. It says bone bones are rigid, they can protect vital organs, which can be easily damaged during physical activity. Uh, and in fact, I want to give you these questions first before I give you the answers, but which vital organ does the cranium protect? Of course, we know the cranium is in the head, which protects the brain is the vital organ. Which vital organ does the spine protect? That would be obviously the spinal cord, so your vertebrae. 
and which vital organs does the rib cage protect? And again, this would also be the heart, the lungs, and perhaps the vertebrae as well. Um, and the final question I've thrown in here, what sport and equipment can you can give you extra protection? So again, in your GCSEs, they're likely to give you, um, it might be a heptathlete, <coughs> excuse me, like Catherine Justin Thompson, or perhaps a football player or a cricketer, and they might ask for where protection is, is used. Um, so again, for, for cricket players, you, they, there's the cricket pads that protect their, um, their fibula um, from fast bowling or, or whatever it is with a hard ball. Cricket, uh, football players using shin pads, again, to protect the same body part. So there's just examples of, of how you can relate equipment to uh, protection of the bones. And then the final one, uh, protection is about her rib cage, which is protected um, from when she lands on the mat. So her rib cage protects her heart and lungs, as well as the cranium, um, which protects her brain when, when landing on the mat. And the final function that we're going to do, the fifth one, is of course... Oh, just tell in terms of... Uh, how the joints are attached, um, but here the example is how does the function aid her when performing in the hurdles, for example, and I've, I wrote down here that it allows her to perform skills such as hurdling by the movement that is performed, so in the picture here, uh, and through the suppleness that um, that is in her joints, she's able to perform flexible movements. Uh, if we, In fact, if I can show you now this video of Tom Daly, of course, he's the Olympic diver. After you've seen a couple of dives. by seeing the landing but uh, if we go through the, um, the the five functions related to that video so if you look at the protection of his vital organs as he hits the water his cranium of course protects his head and his ribs would protect his heart and lungs if we looked at uh, muscle attachment then we would be looking at the movement which takes place in preparation for the for the jump that he does uh, joints for movements so if we looked at what part that the joints played and of course again in terms of the skills and the rotations which he makes that's where the joints would play, play a key part in, in the movement um how would the uh, blood production play a part well of course red blood carry oxygen to work in muscles so therefore um when he when his muscles contract during his performance that's where blood production um comes in and then in terms of the storage of minerals uh, or mineral storage and um, the body weight is supported at the start when he did his jump or and, and there is a, a clip also of when he does a handstand that's where his body weight and um, mineral storage would, would play a key part and we'll skip that one so in terms of functions of the skeletal system we, we've looked at already this but again i'm just going to read this bit out to you it says the skeleton uh, gives the body support enabling enabling us to stand and again looking back at that video if he was just to stand on top of the uh, the board, the diving board, or when he is in the handstand, the skeleton plays a key part in supporting his weight there. Um, in terms of the protection, bones can protect body parts from impacts and injury, the cranium, etc., protects the, the brain that we spoke about. Uh, if we look at the movement, muscles attached firmly to bones, forming levers to allow for sporting movements. Uh, finally, blood cell production, we've said that this, the ends of long bones and some other bones, including the ribs, humerus femur, contain red bone marrow. So there are four types of bones that you need to be aware of, again, for your GCSEs. Uh, those bones are long bones, 
short bones, flat bones, and irregular. Um, so for a long bone description, you would look at something like your humerus in your arm, um, or also yep, your femur, which is the, the top part of your leg. Your short bones would be around your ankles or perhaps your wrists. So we'll look at your tarsals and your carpals, as shown there. Your flat bones for protection, of course, we've spoke about uh, your ribs and your cranium, which obviously feature heavily. And finally, your irregular bones. So that is just your, your vertebrae, as it doesn't fit into a category, I guess. But it, although you might say it's, it's a supporting purpose, um, but your vertebrae would be an irregular uh, bone. Uh, in terms of co connective tissue, so we're talking about all these, the, the, the tendons and how these joints are actually attached. We should have used the word joints a lot today. Um, if we looked at uh, the tendons, of course, that's what attached, attaches bones together. And if we looked at the ligaments, um, of course, that is also, um, sorry, as, sorry, I'll take that back. Tendons is what allows the, the bones to, to move. And then it's the tendons, it's the ligaments that joins them together. I'll get my words right. Um, and then we've got the cartilage, which is the most important part, really, to make sure that bones don't rub together. And, and you, you see a lot of um, athletes, especially long distance runners who are running on, um, you know, uh, concrete all day that the, the bones can rub together and you can damage the cartilage and it's a, it's a common injury in well any endurance sports as, as well as footballers as well I guess and then you've got uh, the four types of joints so we've got the ball and socket joint the hinge joint the pivot joint and the condyloid now the ball and socket joint which is found um, in the shoulders and the hips predominantly and it's a rounded end of the bone and it, it, it spins around on a, on a plate, if you will. Uh, and this joint is important. And as you can see in this picture, actually, uh, Emily Moresmo, I believe it is, um, the ball and socket will be a key part in any tennis players. Because if you think about when they lift uh, to serve, their, their arm is to move from the shoulder downwards and it rotates. So that's, that allows the ball and socket joint to take. To, to be used. Uh, the hinge joints, of course, would be in the knees and the elbows. For sports such as I'm assuming they're going to say rowing, but knee driving, yeah, 100 meter sprint, but anything where your knees um, or your elbows or perhaps both are um, flexing and extending. And then we've got the pivot joint, which is your neck. And then finally, you've got the condyloid, which is the, again the use of the wrists, the carpals, or the the, the ankles, the tarsals, um, and would play a key part in um, pointing your pointing your toes. If you're striking a football, if you're throwing a, a cricket ball or or a, a rugby ball or whatever it was, condyloid plays a part there. So in terms of the types of movements. With your your arms, you flex when you bring your arm up, um, or from the, from the elbow, you flex with your wrist towards you. That's a flexion. And if you were to extend your arm and straighten your arm, that would of course be extension. So flexion, extension. We're now with types of movements. These are key key words for your GCSEs. Not only recognizing the different um, joints, but also to recognize the movements in which they make. So flexion and extension. Then for um, adduct, adduction and abduction. So abduction is when you take your arm away from your body line. And adduction is when you bring it towards you. So if you abduct, um, it be something's taken away. If it's adduct, it's brought in. And then we're looking at rotation. So if you straighten your arm out and you just turn it um, so your hand is pointing down and then your palm up ways, that is rotation. And then circumduction, of course, is the movement of the arm in 360 degrees. So if you to, I don't know, um, bowl, a, bowl a cricket ball, it might be a 360 um, rotation, so that would be circumduction. And then the final one today, I believe, is plantar, sorry, plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. So remember, P is for point. So plantar is when you're pointing your toe 
and dorsi is when you're pointing uh, or bringing your toe back up to your shin so plantar is pointing and dorsiflexion is is bringing your foot back up but uh michael if you can share my screen please yeah of course one second there you are yeah, so I hope you enjoyed today's session. There was a lot to go through in terms of joints, movements, skeleton system. Um, but that's wrapped up now in terms of the skeletal system. So next week we'll be looking at the cardiovascular and the respiratory system. But have a good day, guys, and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate it, Sam. What's the rest of your day looking like? Uh, probably a bit of shopping, but online, of course. <laughs> um, other than that... Probably a few phone calls, actually, a few meetings about, about about school and work. Okay. Well, I won't get in your way any further. Thank you so much for all your help. And obviously, um, I'll leave it now to Nish to uh, end your session. Thank you, Sam, so much. Cheers, Michael. Cheers, Nish. See you soon. All right. So there is an optional task um, for the session today. It is a worksheet that Sam has put together. Um, I will add it to the resources, to the descriptions in YouTube and in Facebook. Um, if you've missed out on any of the sessions, you can find them on there as well. Thank you so much, Nish. Yeah, and science, uh, sorry. Up next, we have science. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thank you so much, and see you all in a bit. Yeah, see you in a bit. Bye.